Today, I'm going to break down Fusion 360's vast functions and show you a beginner's guide to the most useful features for leatherworking. Alright, well welcome to Fusion 360. If this is not your first time using Fusion, there may still be some useful things in here for you. But if this is your very first time trying to use Fusion 360 for something like leatherworking or pattern creating, let's see if we can get you familiar with the program. Alright, so this is the main environment that you're going to be working in. And down here, if you haven't had your layout grid selected, that can be helpful to get you oriented when you're going to start this process. So if you're doing pattern design for leatherworking or something like that on Fusion 360, you're probably either going to be making a flat pattern or modeling a conceptual design. We're going to concentrate on the simpler one, creating a flat pattern. So I want you to come up here and click Create Sketch. And this is a lot like pulling out a piece of paper. You could also say Create and Create Sketch. So I'm going to pull out my piece of paper and now I'm going to select either one of my walls here or the desk. And in this case, I'm going to click it to the desk. And you can kind of see it uh, oriented itself down onto it. So now we're looking straight down onto our piece of paper. And the menu changed. Your computerized assistant that is Fusion just pulled out all the tools specific for you to start drawing. So I want you to picture these as all your rulers and pencils for creating different shapes. And I think the most common one is a line. So you can click on line or you can hit the quick command L and that's going to let you create shapes um, however you might desire. And when you get done creating that line, you can either click the little checkbox there, or you can hit the enter button. And I don't like any of what I drew, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the undo button. Now you'll probably be hitting this a few times. And that's like it's stepping back through time, undoing all the lines that I created. So the next way that you can start to create a shape is going to be using the rectangle tool. And you can also go create and rectangle. And there's a few different ways to create them. And I think I'm going to select center rectangle. So center meaning that I get to select the center of that rectangle. I'm going to do that right on this little origin cube. It's kind of just a spot in space to snap things to. And then you see I stretch it out and it starts to create a rectangle. So if you look down on the uh, bottom of the screen, you can see that six point something floating around. I'm going to enter a width of four. So I'm going to hit the four. And now you can see the two point something moving around over there. I'm going to enter 2.5. Well, that didn't work at all. Let's try that again. Four. Tab. And the tab's going to switch to that other button. <laughs> Even I forget now and then. So as I'm hitting tab, you can see it highlights what number I can change. And 2.5. And I hit the enter button to finish that rectangle. So now you can see the shape has some leader lines. I can actually click it click and drag those around if I need to move them out of the way for something. And if I needed to edit those, I could double click on it and change that number. Hit enter and it'll stretch it out for me. But I'm going to hit back because I'm happy with that. Alright, so another way that we can create some shapes here is working off of a center point. So right here, this is the middle of my shape here. And I'm going to try drawing one half of something so that I can create a, uh, a shape. Um, about there. 
There we go. So I've created a little angled piece. And I think here I'm creating a, a card wallet. If you guys have ever created one of those, it's just a little sleeve to put your cards in. I'll call up a, a picture of that hopefully before the video so you know what you're already doing. And now the next thing I want to show you is how to create a, a curve. So there's different ways to create curved lines. A uh, circle, of course. We're going to use that for holes. Arc, here which has some great options like a three-point arc. Click one end, click the other end, and then bend it as desired, uh, which can create some pretty cool shapes and really give you a nice clean curve. But that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to hit the escape button and that's going to get me out of stuff. If you ever get in a bind and you aren't really sure what to do, tap that escape button twice and go ahead and try whatever you were doing again. So I do want to create a little curved shape here. So I could also go to modify and fill it. So over here in this create menu, that's kind of your, your rulers and, and shapes and then modify. It changes the things that you've already created. And a fillet is kind of like a rounded over edge. I can either select both lines or just select the point on the end. That's going to let me drag it in to create that shape. So I think that's actually what I'm going to do there. And hit enter. And up here I want it to be a little bit more interesting. So instead of a line or an arc, I'm going to create a spline. And I only use this top one. I'm, I'm not even sure what the bottom one's for. I'm going to click on that. And that's going to let me start shaping a line however I might want to shape it. There we go. So now I want to trim this little bit of line that I drew away so that I can have kind of like an opening to grab your card. So I want to modify one of the lines that I've already created and trim it off. Little scissor icon. And when you hold your mouse over a line, it highlights it red. What's red goes away. I click that. Now I've got a nice smooth transfer. So I could never draw that curve again because it was just a random thing I picked. So I'm going to need to mirror it across to the other side. So up here I can go to create and mirror. It's going to want me to select the objects I want to mirror and they don't chain together so you do have to select them all and I really recommend like zooming in on that sucker. And I'm zooming in and out using the rolly wheel of the mouse. Um, gosh, if you uh, don't have a rolly wheel on your mouse you should probably go and grab yourself a U USB mouse right now because this is going to be a lot harder if you are trying to work on the little touchpad of your laptop. Uh, I guess just so you know, you would have to pan around using that instead of clicking in your mouse wheel to move it around. You would have to hold this and zoom in and out instead of zooming in and out your mouse wheel. And gosh, it, it's just a lot easier. All right, so back to the mirror. We selected mirror, we selected our lines, now I'm going to select a mirror line. So this is like the middle of my shape. As soon as I select it, it slaps that other piece on the other side. Looks good, so I'm going to hit OK. Give my computer a second to process. And now you can kind of see, there it is. It's a, um, a mirrored shape. So, oh man, I just, I moved around my view here. So if you find yourself getting lost, come up here and click on this home button. It's going to bring it back and it's going to kind of show you your thing sitting flat on the desk again. Click that top button and it's going to bring you right back in. Use your mouse roll wheel and you're back to your piece. Alright, so I think I'm going to make a few more alterations on this before we turn it into a solid piece. I'm going to use that same fillet command and round these bottom edges over just a little bit. Yeah, I don't like that. Hit escape 
and back. Every once in a while it doesn't want to fill it an edge uh, more than one at a time. But I know I want that at 0.125. So I'm going to enter 0.125 on the keyboard and hit enter with my mouse. Or with my keyboard, I mean. Here we go. I'm going to select that again. One line, the other line, 0.125, enter. All right, so now I've got a shape that I'm pretty happy with. And one last thing that I'm going to create is a stitch line and a hole. But right now I'm feeling like this is all really clutter looking. I don't know if you guys notice there's all these little spots that let you know it's tangent to something or mirrored from the other side. So I can shut off a few of those things over here in the um, sketch palette. So I want to shut off constraints, and that's showing the mirrored lines. And if I was getting overwhelmed with dimensions, I could shut those off, but I like to leave that on. All right, so now I'm going to create a, a line that I can draw a stitch on. So instead of taking a line and drawing a, a line along the edge of my shape, I'm going to use the offset tool. So this is really useful. Modify and offset. So there's two different options here when you get into offset. Uh, default is chain selection. See how it kind of highlights the whole outside of the shape? I'm going to deselect chain selection. Now it's going to make me individually grab each line that I want to offset. And I'm going to individually go through here. And there's not too many of them, so it's not too big a deal. And I'm going to offset that inward just over an eighth of an inch. I could go ahead and enter my value down here. Let's just go ahead and make it right at an eighth. There we go. And I don't like how that stitch gets all square on the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and come in here and try and see if it'll let me do the double fillet this time. There we go. Sometimes it works really smoothly. I'm going to use that as my stitch line. Now I just need a stitch. Just one little circle to start with. I'm going to draw it right here on the line. I went up here to create and center diameter circle. But there's lots of different circles we'll use later. It'll kind of snap me to this line. I'm going to start pretty close to the uh, top. And uh, while I'm stretching out my circle, I could enter the size 0 0.05, which is about the size of a needle, if you're going to do a saddle stitch. And I already know the distance from the edge, so I don't need to dimension it from there. If I wanted, I could hit the dimension command up here, or create and dimension, but I usually just hit D. So I could say the distance between this circle and this line is a set amount. And let's make that an eighth just so that it's nice and even from the edge. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish this sketch by clicking Finish Sketch. And that's kind of saying that we're done with this piece of paper and we're ready to turn it into a virtual piece of leather. So now that I've got my outside profile, I have the hole that is going to be my stitch pattern and a line that it's going to follow. I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. And from here I like to go back to this little home view so I can really picture that piece of paper sitting on my desk. Now you notice the menu changed and now it's pulled out all the tools that are relevant for after you've finished your sketch. It put those sketch tools away. Now it gets to create and extrude. So if you're working with uh, sheet metal you're going to be in a totally different environment here. So we're just going to concentrate on creating solids for flat patterns today. 
So I'm going to click extrude, which is well, create and extrude, or heck, you could hit E if you felt like it. And it's going to want you to click on some sort of a closed profile. And since I've got a few of them here, I'm actually going to have to click on several. So I'm clicking on all these different profiles. This is the part that I was wanting to cut away. So for this front part, I'm not going to uh, click on it. And let's do some five ounce leather or so, point one. So that is the distance right here, point one. Uh, it's also down there. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard or okay to enter it. All right, so now I can use my little cube over here and grab a hold of it and I can take a look at my pattern and move it and sweep it around. I'm just grabbing a hold of that and clicking and dragging and it lets me inspect the way my piece looks just so I can get a feel for it. And if I need to, I can click on any one of these sides or an arrow above it or the little rotation wheel to get myself where I want. And then the zoom in and out with the roll. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my home view. I'm gonna zoom in on this little circle. So you see, I don't have my sketch pattern there anymore. We've created two things. And this is showing you up here in the browser what you've created. We've created a sketch and a body. The little eyeball shows you that it's visible. I could make my body invisible. I can turn it back on. And then down here, my sketch. It is invisible because I already made an extrusion from it. For some reason, Fusion, to make it easier on you, it shuts off the visibility of a sketch the first time you extrude because it assumes you're done with it. But here, I'll turn that back on. So now you can see it floating over the uh, top of my shape, going right across that line. And we're gonna use it to create a pattern. And if you're wondering how I'm floating that shape around like that, I have a, a special 3D mouse. I'll post a link in the description about it. It's totally worth the 80 bucks. All right, so I'm gonna create pattern, pattern on path. So there's lots of different ways to create patterns. This is my new favorite. Pattern on path is only available when you're working with a solid. It's going to want you to select the faces of something, in this case the inside portion of the hole, so go ahead and zoom way in on that, and then select path. You're going to select that line. There we go, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see what we're, what we're doing here. So now we have some options for how to stretch this stitch pattern out. And instead of distance type extent, we're gonna change it to spacing. So spacing is gonna let us space the distance between our stitches. And I don't know about you guys, but I like a good old quarter inch stitch. So I'm gonna hit, hit 0.25 for my distance. And then over here for quantity, I'm gonna just make a guess. How about 20? Now well, 20 didn't get me very far. 25, 30? Yeah, I'm getting pretty close. So you see these little check boxes down here. These kind of represent my holes, and I know I'm going to need a few more. So if you notice, it does not follow the line there. So you're going to have to come back to orientation and path direction. It's just going to follow it right along that path. It um, really is uh, super convenient. You can watch my other more advanced tutorials later after you get used to this and, and you can really create some fun stuff. So now I I want my stitch to come up to about an eighth of an inch from the top, but over here I'm only so uh, so close to the edge, so I think I'm going to add one more stitch, oh, but you know it looks like it's a little bit too far if I add that that one more stitch. So this is where you're gonna have to do 
just a little bit of actual guess and test work, uh, the computer's not going to do it all for you. Is that if I have this piece about that far over here, I have to decide whether I'd like my stitch to go further or not as far. And I think I'm going to make my stitches just a little bit further. So I'm going to have it stop here and I'm going to try and stretch it up that way. But I add a little space in between it. So 0.25 is in an ideal world. Let's try 2.5.5. Eh, 2.5.4. Four. There we go. So now it lines right up below that mark on that side. And I could spend a bit more time getting it just right if I was super concerned. But right now we're about four thousandths of an inch off of your standard quarter inch stitch pattern. And for reference, that's just a little over a thickness of a sheet of paper difference. So if your customer can see the difference, more power to them. All right, it's going to take a minute for your computer to process if it's a little bit older. But now we've got a stitch pattern that follows along our outside edge. And the sketch is still on, so just to clean up everything, we're going to go ahead and shut that one off. And we've got ourselves your first leather part, if this is the first time you're working with it, or if you were just doing this to start working with uh, creating patterns, hopefully it was helpful. Uh, there's a little bit more we could do from there just to get everything perfect, but in general I'm pretty happy with the uh, the uh, way that this started out, I noticed that the um, the holes don't line up just exactly as I might want, but you know, not too bad. Uh, if you're wondering how to output this pattern from here into a PDF, watch my one of my videos on turning a paper pattern to PDF or how to output uh, scale patterns to PDF. It does it right here on Fusion 360. And as you get more advanced, you can watch some of the videos on how to create uh, 3D models of this. So you never even have to uh, create the pattern in the first place. So if you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button and go ahead and subscribe so that you can get uh, notifications on my future posts. And if you've got any questions on anything I did here today or if you have any uh, requests on future videos, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great day.